far to the west, across the sea, there is a place called Vinland. It is warm and fertile, far from slavery and the fires of war. No one can reach you there. What do you say? Will you go there with me? I read Vinland Saga in 2018 and it quickly became my comic of the year. And on this channel, when I do name my anime a comic of the year, I make a separate video explaining why. But Vinland Saga is far too excellent for just one video. This is a complex manga, an epic tale of growth and change, war and peace, moving on and becoming greater than who you once were. It's a manga about the consequences of actions, suffering and making people suffer, death, revenge, failure, and more. Makoto Yukimura created a work so layered in detail that I just had to break it down by arc, while also appreciating the historical accuracies prevalent in the series. And I hope you will join me on this adventure through the themes and history of Yukimura's ongoing Viking tale. Welcome to a new series on this channel. I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do making it and will stay with me in the long run. This is the saga of Thorfinn Karlsefn. For roughly 300 years, starting in the 8th century AD, a northern European people terrorized the civilized world in their dragon-headed ships. From Western Europe to Russia, North Africa, Greece, Turkey, even the Middle East. They appeared far and wide without warning, pillaging and slaughtering, only to leave just as suddenly as they came. In Old Frankish they were the Nomani, in England they were the Danes, to the Byzantine Empire the Rus or Ross. But in later years they would simply be known as Vikings. The Viking Age lasted between 800 and 1066 AD. A group of Scandinavians left their home to settle elsewhere. It's not exactly known why the Scandinavians left their home, as some of the information we have on Vikings today is still being debated by historians. This is due to a lack of solid records, as much of the information on Vikings came after the Viking era. However, we do still have the information necessary to know their way of life, important events, and their technology through primary primary sources such as Scandinavian art and writing and those the Vikings affected. It's speculated that the Scandinavians may have left their home over political instability, overpopulation, or to find wealth. Whatever it was, they probably left their land behind as a means to survive. Despite unfortunate beliefs, being a Viking was not a race but a name. The word Viking originates from the Scandinavians themselves. In Old Norse, a language still spoken during that time, the root of the word Viking, Vic, means bay, which helps translate the word to mean pirate raid. There's a bunch of old Norse grammar I don't want to get into, but extra sources are linked. Victims of the raids who didn't have a name for Vikings would call them Donny or Danes, Pagani or Pagans or Normany, meaning Northmen. These words actually describe the Vikings' culture and way of life. Donny or Danes could mean one of the territories the Vikings settled. Denmark, Pagani or Pagan could mean the Vikings' religion, as they were polytheistic or worshipped more than one god, and Normandy means Northmen as they were from Northern Europe. Dictionary.com lists four definitions for the word Viking. The first three reads as follows. One, any of the Scandinavian pirates who plundered the coast of Europe from the 8th to 10th century. Two, a sea revolting bandit, pirate. Three, a Scandinavian, I would like to ask you to take these definitions with a grain of salt, as Vikings were not the violent raiders we perceived them as. Being a Viking was a profession that consisted of raiding, trading, and settling. However, that wasn't all at once. Some raiders were also part-time farmers during the off-season, while others were full-time merchants and explorers. Vikings found most success as settlers and businessmen, not raiders. 
The first official Viking raid was in 793, when a group of Norwegians landed in Northumbria, modern day England, and raided the monastery. Vikings would raid monasteries because it was the building where the treasure was kept. They were unguarded and monks couldn't fight back. They didn't clear everything from the monastery, but it was enough to send a message. During my research for this episode, I came across an article from 2015 translated from Danish on ScienceNordic.com. The article states that archaeologists from Denmark and the UK found evidence of the Vikings having a peaceful origin in Denmark. This theory is currently being debated by historians, but this article is the only source of information I have about this theory. I did look up one of the archaeologists and found his profile on the University of Aharis website. If you're really into Vikings and history, you should check out the articles he's written on Vikings. They may just pique your interest. Link in the doobly-doo. Scandinavian settlement is important to what we know about Vikings today. As I said earlier, the information found on their culture came from themselves and those they raided. Scandinavians were cultured and educated people like anyone else, even though they were dismissed as, to put it nicely, lower class slash educated by Europeans for not believing in a major religion, Christianity, as other cultures did. Scandinavians knew how to read, write, and calculate important skills for the professions the youth would one day take up. They also had their own art, religion, techniques, and skills like shipbuilding, which was very important, etc. As their settlements grew, Scandinavian culture and Viking activity came from areas now known as Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Greenland, and Iceland. In certain areas, Areas like Iceland and Greenland, where Scandinavians were the majority, their culture dominated. Scandinavians are so influential that you can still find overlap of their culture in the modern day from the areas they came from or blended in with. Not just in food and architecture, but also in trade routes, shipbuilding, and navigation. Even the city of Dublin we owe to the Scandinavians as they founded the capital of Ireland. Dublin was also home to one of Europe's largest slave markets. People Keep in mind that during this time period, slavery was based on class, not race like my country America is known with. We'll cover the history of slavery and how everyone that is anyone practiced the act when we entered the slave arc. Speaking of that overlap, during my research, I found an article from the Irish Times about how DNA testing discovered the face of Irish women taken by Vikings as slaves. Again, link, doobly do, happy reading. It's still being debated why young men were willing to risk their lives as Viking raiders. They may have done it for a profit or because ownership of land and wealth went to the oldest son while the youngest fought to buy their own. Land and wealth were key to gaining a wife as Scandinavian women had more rights than other European women, like the right to divorce, or inherit land from their fallen husbands, or maybe it was to simply follow in their parents' footsteps. It is very important to note that Vikings didn't raid over religion. They didn't raid because their gods told them to, they were pagan, because they were at war with the Christians or other nonsense. The goal of the raids were to find wealth. They cared just as much about Christianity as those they raided. How suddenly they appeared quick they were to work and leave a trail of blood behind them was able to strike fear into the hearts of innocence alone. The end of the Viking Age happened because Scandinavian culture was weakened. Politics, lack of raid, loss of land, and the universal takeover of Christianity in Europe caused for the Vikings to fade away until they disappeared entirely. The last hurrah for the Vikings began with the Earl of Northumbria, Coswig Godwinson. Godwinson rebelled against England and their king which led to his exile. Afterwards, he somehow got into contact with the King of Norway, Harold Hardrada, and convinced him to go to war with England. In 1066, the Battle of the Sanford Bridge took place. Long story short, the Norwegian army was flattened and both Godwinson and Hardrada died in battle. And with them died the Vikings. Between the 9th and 10th century, Norse Viking Nodden settled Iceland. Although research suggests he wasn't the first to visit the country, he is credited with its discovery and settlement, naming the land Snowland. Nodden is credited for the discovery of other islands and lands, but most important are those descended from him. Nodden is brother to Oxen Thorin, whose great-grandson is Thorveld Asvalsund, whose son is Eric the Red. 
Eric the Red was an explorer from Norway who was exiled from Iceland circa the 1980s for murder. Eric then traveled with his family to Greenland and is credited as the explorer who first settled Greenland, though like Nodden, Greenland already had its visitors. However, Eric and his settlement were key to the land flourishing. He also had four children, one of which was Leif Erikson. It's Leif Erikson day! Hinga dinga dargan! <laughs> Leif Erikson, nicknamed Leif the Lucky, like his fathers before him, was an explorer and merchant. Born in Iceland, Leif grew up in Greenland due to his father's exile and lived a rather eventful life. Leif fathered two sons, Thorgils and Thorkel. That information confuses the fuck out of me when it comes to the character Bug Eyes Thorfinn, because why was he created when Leif had his own children, but we'll burn that bridge when we cross it. Between 1995 to 1000, Leif sailed to Norway and pledged his loyalty to King Olaf Tryggvason. While doing this, Leif converted to Christianity and was tasked with the spread of the religion across Europe. When you think of it, Leif can also be credited with the end of the Vikings. It is believed that in an attempt to travel from Greenland to Norway circa 1000, Leif and his crew was blown off course and became the first European to land on the continent of North America. 500 years before Columbus didn't so-called discover America, while also not proving that the earth was round. You know, something we already knew since the ancient goddamn Greeks. Oncoming history nerd rant aside, Leif decided to name the new land Vinland, and he and his crew quickly began to build a small settlement. During settlement, Leif was visited by the land's inhabitants, Native Americans. Although unable to understand each other, the groups managed to make peace and avoid fighting. Historians don't know where Vinland is exactly located, but we do know Vinland is along the North American coast between modern-day New England and the Gulf of St. Lawrence in eastern Canada. One of the settlements uncovered is now known as pardon me for speaking a language that I don't know here, Lesson U Meadows, discovered in the 1960s, located in the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador, the historical site is open to the public for visitation, which is something I hope to do in the future for this series. You can also visit Norshad, a Viking village and trading course located near Lawson. The settlement grew to house between 70 and 90 people and provided for men, women, children, and livestock. To the north, Vinland was known as the Land of Riches and was an abundant supply of timber, livestock, and furs. However, despite being called the land of riches, the visit was brief. Vinland was already settled by natives, and previous settlement meant competition. Both the Norse and natives had the same skills in fishing and hunting, and although they avoided major conflict, there was still hostilities with the natives that prevented trade and access to all resources. Instead of sharing, the Vikings probably thought that the goods weren't worth the hassle, leaving the settlement abandoned until history would find it again. Leif became Greenland's chieftain after his father's death circa 1000 and died in 1020. Vikings didn't have horns! No idea where this came from, but Vikings absolutely did not wear horns on their helmet. And guess what's not in Vinland Saga? That's right, horns! I did the math for you, and Vinland Saga also takes place 64 years before the end of the Viking era when the prologue begins and Thorfinn is sick. Being a historical fiction manga, not every character we encounter is based on a real person. During my research, I came across something quite shocking. There is a book written in Old Norse called The Book of the Icelanders that documents the history of Iceland, and the author of the book is named Ari Thorgilsson. And would you know it, there is also a character in the manga named Ari who is a native of Iceland and was part of Thorfinn's childhood. We may have yet to know Ari's last name in the manga, but I wouldn't be surprised if Yukimura left that lovely little detail for those who would dive into the history of the manga. In the manga, Leif tells Thorfinn that their ancestors came to Iceland because they were running away. Their ancestors came from Norway, but when a powerful man named Harald invaded their home and proclaimed himself as the first king of Norway, the people had the choice to either submit to him or leave. Harald, the self-proclaimed first king of Norway, was a real person who did drive the Scandinavians out of their home. Harald Harold was born I don't even fucking know when because fucking history websites can't even make up their god 
damn mind. In rule circa 860, son of Halfdan the Black, who I don't believe is the same Halfdan we see in the manga, as Black would have been around 2,000 years old when the manga begins, Harold was a warrior who succeeded his father after his death. I am unable to pin down the age Harold came to power, being unable to know the year of his birth and not trusting any sources who claim to know such information. The struggle is real. Harold did lead many conquests, both on the battlefield and politically. One source that I am probably the least trusting of, but it does give a slight connection to the manga, states Harold's tax system caused many to emigrate to lands such as Iceland. As stated earlier, Iceland doesn't have a large Scandinavian population, and in the manga, Leif does state that he and Thorfinn's ancestors left their homeland due to Harold's iron fist. So this may be true, as Scandinavians may have left their homeland Home due to political instability. It's also true that many were driven out of their homes during the Viking Age due to slaughter and politics. True or a falsely placed pin on Vinland Saga's timeline? I would say true. We won't know until more evidence emerges, but it's something fun to think about and consider. For those wondering, we will be covering more characters in the series at a later time. As some we already see in this upcoming arc, I want to save for spoilers. Okay, time for my favorite subject. We get a glimpse at Viking myth in the manga. The sea serpent Jormungand, child of Loki, god of mischief, and a giantess known as the one who brings grief, whose name I cannot pronounce because I'm going to butcher it very badly, so it's on the screen for you to yell at me at how much my pronunciation sucks. It was Loki who threw his son into the sea, and the snake grew so large its entire body surrounds all of Midgar and the earth itself. Which name? be where the snake got his name world serpent. I don't believe the young man's godfather was correct about Jormungand being the end of sailors, but I do know his arch enemy was Thor, god of thunder. I don't want to go into detail or spoil an amazing story about the snake and the god of thunder, but I highly encourage you to read up on the myth itself. Just google Thor goes fishing because trust me, you will not be disappointed. The chariot rider we see in the corner of the panel where Jormungand appears could be be Sol, goddess of the sun, or her brother Mani, the moon god. The wolf behind them is Scroll and Hati, with one chasing the moon and the other the sun. I wish I knew what the wolf's names translate to, but everyone says something different, making my research inconclusive. Oh my god, kill me. But what I do know, because thank the gods, this is something everyone can agree on, is Scroll and Hati were in pursuit to devour the gods, and when they do, the cosmos will collapse as one of the many signs of Ragnarok, the end of the world. I believe the cartoonish octopus over here is actually the Kraken who really devoured ships. The Kraken was a large squid or octopus that was believed to be the size of an island. And I hope I don't have to go into how cool the Kraken is and how it's one of the most terrifying monsters humans ever imagined, even making its way into the consciousness of America's favorite race's uncle H.P. Lovecraft, and in short the Call of Cthulhu and is spin off by author Brian Lumley, or how HP's inspiration of the monster went on to inspire the coolest Overwatch skin to date, or how there is modern science on the real life origins of the Kraken. God, okay, I need to stop fangirling now. Jesus, I really need to do a video series on myths and monsters. This shit makes me super excited. Finally, what is a saga? A Norse saga is a story, myth, or history told by the Scandinavians themselves. These were voyages, battles, tales of gods and men told and retold from the heart of storytellers like Leif does with the children and the manga. Sagas were long and eventful, and yes, they were written in like Ari's History of Iceland. Much of what we cover in this video was discovered through a Norse saga, the saga of Eric the Red, Ragnarok, King Sagas, Saga of Leif Erikson, and finally, the Vinland Saga, written and originating from Iceland, told from the Saga of Eric the Red and the Greenland Saga. Yes, even the title of the manga we're about to cover is a historical reference. And with that, I believe this concludes the first historical episode of the Saga of Thorfinn Karlsefin. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something about Vikings and Vinland and see history in a different light. This is a huge passion project of mine and I hope you'll stick around, especially for the next episode where we dive into the manga and we'll have much better production than this episode will ever have. You know how to find it whenever that episode drops. 
Until then, my name is Ari, and happy learning, my friends.